All right, so this should be a little bit better here. Um, welcome back. Wanted to do a, a little Friday night live stream, actually from inside the trailer. Um, race cars right over there. Meals right there. Quads right here. I got my computer set up. I got a Starlink is how we power our internet from the road. That is a big part of the road life. It's one of our lifelines, so we can keep doing everything that we do, uploading, posting, all that. Um, but as you guys jump in here, happy Friday. So happy and excited to talk to you guys. You guys know I always get so pumped up um, whenever we get to do anything, usually mainly post in videos. But of course, I like to go live from time to time. And I'm catching you right now from um, the Dallas-Fort Worth area um, right here. I believe you would consider this northern Texas would be um, about kind of where we're at. Just actually got done doing a couple of appearances today with one of our primary partners, uh, The Boss. So they have a couple stores down here. Really cool. Got to see a lot of great fans. Got to hang out. You can definitely tell the vibe's different right now in this area because it is NASCAR weekend, which is um, a big deal. You know, NASCAR's in town. Actually, probably about right now, what the truck race is just getting ready to start. Um, I think, the, or no, sorry, they're qualifying and practicing the Xfinity cars and then the truck races this evening. So that's going to be really cool. Um, they're going to be doing all that. But Make sure you guys pop in the chat and, uh, you know, let me know where you're from, where are you watching, what are you guys up to today, what's your weekend look like. Race season is kind of like officially here, so things are kind of starting to, you know, get busier and busier and busier, and, you know, a lot more a lot more is happening. So we have a fan pop in, said, yo, chat, what's up, live racing. Uh, Alan said he's a big fan, good luck tomorrow, and that um, we have some people watching from Minnesota. That's very neat. Definitely pop in and tell me where you guys are, uh, you know, hanging out from today. And like I said, what races you're going to be going to this weekend for us, it's a, it's a big one. You know, this is a, one of our partners. Um, this is one of their home weekends, the boss, as I just mentioned. So they have a couple locations. So this is their kind of their, their big deal. Um, you know, the, the dirt track at Texas motor speedway doesn't race a lot. So this is like a unique opportunity for a lot of people in the area to catch four 10 wing sprint cars on a big stage, you know, high limits in town. Um, that's going to be really interesting. Their season's like starting to kick back off and we're going to really see how this whole thing plays out with high limit versus outlaws racing on the same weekends. Um, I wouldn't just say right up the road from each other, but you know, they're up in Peebly, Missouri. So they're, you know, a good ways, but you know, maybe about nine, 10 hours, but uh, I think they have almost 40 cars tonight. We're going to probably have a lot of cars tomorrow in Texas. So we're going to kind of see how that all plays out. It'll be super exciting. And then Sunday um, during the NASCAR race, we'll be over in Crandall, Texas, which is only, I think, about an hour from here, depending on traffic. Traffic is very, very bad in this area. Oh, my gosh. Imagine, you know, we got a 81-foot rig trying to get up and down the interstate and, and pull off and, and get into some of these back alleys and whatnot. It's a, it's a, it's a mess. So. Um, we'll head over to Crandall on Sunday, then we got Monday off, then we head to Meeker, Oklahoma to race um, with High Limit for their first midweek money series. See, we were supposed to uh, run, Tuesday was supposed to be the first midweek money series this last week over in West Memphis, Arkansas. That rained out. Then today, as we're talking right now, I was supposed to be behind the wheel, and that rained out at Texarkana. So we've just had some bad luck. I think we're four races in um, to the season, and we've had four cancellations, which is very normal. Actually, we've had more cancellations than that. I take that back. We had uh, Hanford rained out as well. So we have more cancellations than we have had uh, races. But that's just kind of, that's how the, the cookie crumbles. So we've been um, enjoying our time, though, out here. Spent a lot of it in Oklahoma. Now we're down here in Texas. Then we head back to Oklahoma this week. And then we head to one of my more favorite places in the country, um, up to Knoxville, Iowa, next weekend, as long as the weather looks good. So it's going to be a fun couple of weeks for us. We're, you know, about halfway through this little swing through the Midwest to start our year. Then we're going to head back home, get some stuff rebuilt, get back going. Um, it'll be nice to be home for sure. Just to, you know, it's hard on the road to, to get, to, to keep things 100% in the sense of continuing to build the program and build with your equipment. Cause you can only have so much equipment in this trailer, right? So last week we had a problem with the car that car is now upstairs and our backup car is now on the ground and you wouldn't even know the difference, but um, you know, we can't fix that backup car until we get it back home. So that kind of type thing. So we had some people join in. Um, Josh says, unfortunately has to work this weekend. Rory said hi from Australia. Um, we had some other people pop in the chat. Thank you guys all. Appreciate you spending a little bit of your Friday afternoon with me. Like I was saying, though, uh, you know, we're hopefully finally get some racing in this weekend, um, starting down here, working our way up towards Iowa, and then hopefully get a couple weeks in Knoxville before uh, before I, I head back out. 
it'll be um, it's nice to get to run at the sprint car capital of the world, especially any laps around there are just so valuable because you never really know what the track is going to be like come uh, Knoxville Nationals time. Last year, we, you know, were there plenty of nights and I felt like none of them were really the same. Now you still have to have your car really good. You got to figure out that place. And that's one of the toughest dirt tracks I've ever ran in my whole entire life. You know, when you're kind of just running laps, it's not bad, but get so technical running the bottom, the berm, how to make speed, how to pass cars, how to make your car good enough to do that. It's uh, it's an impressive skill to get around that place. And not many people can do it, even the guys that run there all the time on a weekly basis. And so for us, not being a local, um, it's important for to get for us to get any laps we can. So we're going to head up there and we get to practice on Friday and then um, race on Saturday and then come back the next weekend with the World of Outlaws, which is going to be a packed weekend because High Limit doesn't race. Some other stuff doesn't race. So they'll also be running. So I'm sure 40 to 50 cars is not out of the question. And then we have one more weekend down um, back in Missouri uh, at Lakeside Speedway. We also hit 81 Speedway on the way out. So should hopefully get a nice stretch of races in here if Mother Nature cooperates. So that'll be a good time. And then, you know, like I said, once we get back home, May, we're going to have some racing. But it's going to be really important for us to keep working on building our program back up to to where it um, needs to be. And, and you know, get some of our loose ends fixed and, and figure out kind of what we learned from the trip and what we can take into the rest of the season and kind of keep figuring out, you know, some of our race car and stuff. Steven said, how is Carly doing? That's a great question. So Carly's been doing great. Um, you know, she's been getting more mobility every single week. She's doing a great job. Um, you know, spent a lot of time doing physical therapy, like at home physical therapy or on the road motorhome physical therapy hasn't really necessarily went and saw someone a lot. Uh, you know, they just gave her some, some pretty simple, some pretty simple stuff to do. And a lot of that is just, you know, literally laying in bed at night, leg out, you know, doing some stretches, almost like you're hitting the gas. You know what I mean? Kind of doing that side of things. Uh, but you know, Carly's been really doing good doing that. And then I feel like honestly, some of the craziness at the track has probably helped her as well. She's been bouncing around, you know, you know, move, taking tires on and off, checking stagger, dismounting mountain, you know, running through the hot pit. Oh my gosh. She's, you know, just in everybody's hot pit doing a good job helping. So Carly's done a great, great job um, getting her, her leg back recovered. Does she still have a long road? Absolutely. I think a foot injury, that's one of the worst parts about it. It's just, there's so much healing and it has to heal. Right. So she's going to get back to, I think 95% here pretty quick, but that last 5% is pretty important. And it takes several months to just build some of that muscle back and, and keep, uh, keep getting things where it needs to go. But she is doing great. Uh, uncle bones dropped a, a $50 donation for my pit pass. Uncle bones. Thank you so much for the donation. Uh, stuff like that goes a very, very long way. So thank you for supporting our team. And we can't do it without people like you guys and, and the great community that I have on here. Um, let's see if you guys have questions, definitely drop them, drop them here in the chat. Uh, you know, interested to see what, if there's anything you guys want to know about our schedule. I know a lot of people were asking about this car, which I have a video coming out of us rebuilding this week and, and putting a lot of time and effort into getting things back 100%. You know, see when you have a crash, like we did on Saturday, the unfortunate part about it is it was actually almost such a good tumble that there wasn't a whole lot salvageable, which actually meant a little, I mean, work but less work in a way because right you know there's not like you're trying to get a bunch of stuff fixed and get this car rebuilt it's like this car you know unfortunately um you know is going to have to be reclipped in the front uh, it's going to need you know maybe to be you know messed with even a little bit in the back with one of the, the down bars um down by my feet which like i said i'm pretty sure it's all fixable but you know it's not like we can go and rebuild a backup car you know we got to wait till we get home or we got to find someone to do it out here so just kind of was figuring that out and weighing our options. But at this point, that's water under a bridge. So we put this car upstairs. That's where it's sitting. We got our other car down and, you know, just went through this whole car and made sure, you know, which it was basically good leaving the shop um, when we first came out here. So there wasn't really a lot to do besides drop an engine in it. And then, uh, you know, basically get, get the notification that we were rained out then get another, another notification that we were rained out. And now we're here in Dallas, Texas. So that's kind of how the how the week was. But that's part of um, that's part of life on the road. John says, do you talk with Shark Racing? Yeah, so we're still good friends with all those guys. Um, you know, Bobby, gosh, I love Bobby to death. He's a really good guy. Um, you know, I'm actually sad that I don't get to race with him still because I, I just love Bobby. But the great part is we park next to them just about every night this year, whether it's Logan or Jake. And, um, you know, he's obviously hanging out between the two cars and, 
I mean, gosh, if you've talked to Bobby Allen, he's just a good time. So, uh, yeah, no, we hang out with those guys. We're still friends with all their crew guys, bounce off advice, ideas, talk to them. And, you know, I think it's um, been a great, great friendship just with all of them, even though, you know, technically we're not still racing together. We are, um, you know, we're still the first people to have each other's backs at the races, right? Like they have our back, we have their back and um, they're just, they're just great people. So let's see. Um, someone asked if crashing a sprint car hurts. That's a, that's a good question. Um, it depends, you know, man, I think, I think it really just depends on the crash. Um, luckily I've been very fortunate. I have not been in many crashes where I was too shaken up. It, uh, it really just depends on how you land, you know, right. I think that's one of the worst parts about it. So when guys crash in any race car, a lot of times it's the hits that are the worst. It's not necessarily the flipping through the air. You know, you can do 16 barrel rolls, right? And that those aren't great, but for the most part, usually something is kind of absorbing it. And especially when you have a wing on top, that absorbs so much of the crash. That's huge. Um, but the worst are when you hit something and come to a dead stop or, you know, the momentum changes so fast. Uh, that's when things get really, really bad. So luckily for me, when I crashed this last weekend on Saturday, don't get me wrong, did I, you know, did I, I, did I go pretty big? Yeah. But I didn't have still any of those those um, those sudden stops, those kind of jaw dropping, you know, hits. Uh, and I think that's what that's what helped me. And my wing absorbed a lot of it, but my car also did too. But you know, the crashes where guys, you know, like I said, are are going and there's a car parked and they just those those stuff like that. I think is a lot worse. Um, and guys getting hit in really bad spots is um, is is where things get really dangerous and where you get really really shaken up. So like one of my worst crashes was at Skagit when I hit Austin Wheatley in turn three. Um, I just couldn't see him, you know, from a long ways back. I hit him from a long ways back, but I just couldn't see him. My vision was blocked. And by the time I got in the corner, like I, you know, I, I just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm you know, I, I kind of just held on and I just squared him up so good. I literally felt paralyzed almost in that moment, like your whole body just hurts. And that's probably the most I've ever hurt in a race car. I probably, you know, I think I was almost in shock for like a minute and I literally didn't move. I just was like. And then finally, like your senses come back to reality, I guess, and you you get out and you're, um, you know, I, that's probably the wind, you know, the wind getting knocked out of you type deal. Um, seeing all sorts of good questions here. Um, awesome Motorcycle Tours, he did say, tell us about The Boss. So The Boss is a company here in, um, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. They also have a location in Austin. So they have three locations and they're huge in the home improvement space. So if you guys are looking for like flooring or fencing for around, for around your home or anything else, um, definitely stop by. They're really great people. And you know, what's cool is like, you can go to these, you know, there's these other brands, right. That, you know, you would say are competitors, but, um, those, these bigger stores, right. You can't always get the customer service, but what's big about them is they got many people on the showroom floor ready to talk to you. And, and, um, you know, so I got to see their, their stores for the first time today and really impressive operations. And it was cool that they let me, they let me hang out and kind of see the behind the scenes of what they do. And, and they're supporting dirt track racing in a huge, huge way, you know, with our program. And so, we need more people like that. Um, you know, that's, you know, and I, when I always encourage you guys about, you know, trying to have good sponsor relationships and stuff, right. You, uh, you know, you got to go out and find these people and stuff. And, and, and once you have great partners on your team and great sponsors, like you just need to keep them happy. That's uh that's one of the biggest things. And, um, you know, going and seeing what they do and how they, how they run their business and, and who their customer is and, and just talking with them. That's uh that's very important. And so like, I'm glad that we got to do that today. And when I encourage you guys, you know, like I said, it's like, we talk about, you know, people ask me, you know, one of my most asked questions is how do I get more sponsors? How do I do this? How do I do that? And like the main thing, man, is you just, you got to be in the weeds of it all. You know, you're, you can't just uh, go get that and then go do your thing. Like, you know, it's always more about what you can do for someone else than what they can do for you. And if you can match that value, then um, that's, that's huge. That's huge. So really thankful to have them helping out and, and uh, just, you know, it was a really successful day getting to, to meet a lot of their customers and see their stores. I had someone hop on here. They were talking about um, how much does it cost to run a sprint car? So sprint car racing is very, very expensive. Um, the one thing I will say, you know, as people, as you talk about the cost, there's there's a lot of different ways you can go about it, right? And, and there's a lot of different budgets across the top, 
you know, the top uh, part of sprint car racing. It kind of just depends on how you run your team. I would say some teams definitely spend a little bit looser than others, and some are a little bit tighter. Uh, but I think I saw someone say anywhere from three hundred and fifty thousand to eight hundred thousand dollars to run a, a very top notch schedule. And I would agree something, you know, that like I said, that that shows that that range of a tighter budget to a looser budget. Now, when you are more on that end of three hundred and fifty thousand, you know, maybe where you're cutting costs is, you know, having one less crew guy, uh, guys building engines in house or having, you know, um, you know, some, something there to cut a big cost on the on the motor program side of things or maybe if you're not spending as much because you have a deal on cars um, at the end of the day, though, no matter what, like, like I said, just to the sprint car side of things, it, it's just very expensive to do what we do. And that's just, that's just how it rolls. And that kind of goes back to the whole having, you know, good sponsorships and, and good people that, that help out in many different areas. Um, and you also got to have a really good team. And that's, that's a big expense too. You have crew guys that you have to pay, um, you know, on a weekly basis to, to help make it happen. Um, in, in, in all of that. And, you know, so there's, there's just so many different areas that, uh, that, you know, it, it gets expensive very, very quick. But I saw we had a, a chat from Carson Thomas, $20. Thank you so much just to help out. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're going to keep working on it. So let's see. I saw Chase Smithy put GoPro sponsorship when, yeah, no kidding. I, with all the GoPros we use, man, we should have a, we should have a lot of GoPros uh, lined up, man. I've broken so many dang cameras and so many, um, uh, so, so many cases and yeah, gosh, that's, uh, that's funny. I actually, I had a, a little thing behind in my bedroom. There's a, like a little cabinet, right. And I just filled it up with all my broken cases. And there was literally, I had a, a graveyard of them. And I mean, I'm talking 30 or 40 cases that I just threw away a couple weeks ago. And that was, um, I mean, when you think of that 30 cases at $50 a piece, that that's, um, that's a, that's a good chunk of change. So that's, uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, Tyler cool guy said, hi, Tanner, still hope to see you in PA for PA speed week this year. If everything goes well. Yeah. So right now I don't, uh, you know, I don't obviously have it on my plan to go to PA speed week, but I did say that I have some open week in there. So, you know, it's not a hundred percent out of the question. I just got to kind of see where things are at and where I'm at in the country. You know, the hardest part about what I do in my schedule, as I'm trying to formulate game plans and figure out how to do stuff is simply because I'm from Oregon and being all the way out on that side of the country. So, you know, if I'm out here and there was a, let's say, for example, this weekend rained out where I was at, I could have easily went to Peevely or I could have easily went somewhere else. And later in the season when there's even more options, I could just go wherever. But when you're in Oregon and something rings out in California or whatever, there's not necessarily options to go. So that's the hardest part about filling in some of that off time as you're trying to continue to formulate a schedule. It's just super difficult when, you know, like I said, you're, uh, you're just limited to that area and, you know, out there you're so on an Island, um, that it, like I said, it's much tougher. So that's why a lot more of my Midwest schedule races are, are set. And then, you know, I'm able to kind of change if, if I need, but just a different world out there at home. And, and I think that's, uh, that's a big part of it. Uh, someone was talking about the cost of engines, you know, talking about the cost of racing. It's that's a, that's a pretty open topic and there's a lot for sure. Someone was saying anywhere from 60 K to a hundred K on engines. I mean, yeah, possibly. I mean, I would say a lot of guys, you know, for, to, to my knowledge, new engines are, are going for, you know, 70, $75,000, maybe 80, I guess. Um, which like I said, I mean, you're, you know, it, it's, it's, it is really interesting how the whole thing works. And I totally get it, but you know, everyone's trying to buy as much power as they possibly can. And a lot of times in a lot of scenarios, you know, you're only using every, every ounce of that power in qualifying. And then after that, you're dialing it back. So, you know, in 410 racing, a lot of guys are killing power throughout the night. You know, you go to a really slick track, you don't need all 900 or 930 or 950, whatever we're getting nowadays um, after qualifying, because the car's too hot to control the drive and traffic and dirty air and this and that. So, um, you know, guys, whether they're changing nozzles or changing headers or bagging the engine or, you know, putting restrictors in, whatever, there's so many ways that you can, um, you know, detune, but, uh, you know, everyone's spending so much for that qualifying lap. And then don't get me wrong. There's nights when the track's fast too, and you need it, but, uh, just a super interesting topic, how sprint car racing works. And I totally get it. I'm not like saying that that's wrong or nothing. 
it's just the landscape of it all. You, you know, how these formats are set up. Um, I think I was listening to an engine builder talk about it on, on a podcast recently, and they are totally right. Like as they change the formats to make the formats the way they are, guys were needing to spend more to get more horsepower, right? You couldn't have an engine that, that lacked a little bit. And just as the track came to you, you raced good. You literally need to qualify good. Otherwise there's no reason to even show up. And I feel like even some of my videos and stuff, they, they show that, right? Like every time we, we run with the outlaws, whether I was with shark or my car, if I qualify good and I am in a position to make the dash, our night goes great. And every time we're just fighting to barely make the feature or don't even make the feature, you know, unfortunately, I don't mean to sound negative, but nights like that and anybody that has ran consistently with the outlaws would tell you some nights you almost feel like you're better off just to load up if you don't qualify good because your nights it's basically over. doesn't mean you can't drive through the A, make your car better, this and that. But as far as hopes of winning a feature, man, it's uh, it's pretty rare to watch guys come from, you know, deep in the field and, and even run on the podium versus, um, you know, let alone win a race. Um, this is a good question. Someone said, do you think running with the woo and the high limit makes you a better racer having to compete at the elite level? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'll never knock that ever. Um, you know, running, running the hardest shows. Here's, here's one thing that's worth explaining though. So it makes you way better running with world outlaws, running with high limit, but I think there's a balance of racing as you're trying to build, you race with those guys, you race with those guys, then you dial it back and you run some shows, you do really well, then you kind of come back. I think that uh, going, you know, there's is a point when guys are ready to run with the outlaws full time or ready to run with high limit full time. But I think like in a situation like we're in, what we tried to do a little more with our schedule this year, and it may not look like it, but we'll kind of see how it plays out is, you know, we're going to run these really hard races to start the year. Then we're going to have some KWS shows kind of through May and June. Then we're going to come back out here. Then we're going to go back home. You know, so we're trying to set ourselves up because there's a really important aspect of getting your teeth kicked in and, you know, losing but then also if you can, you know, dial back to something that by no means am I saying KWS is um, not skilled or nothing like that. KWS is very challenging, but there's a difference between that and running with the World of Outlaws. Uh, so you kind of have to have some of that mix. It's even like when you're just getting into 410s, maybe you run 410s for a little bit, bounce back down to 360s, then come back. See, getting that back and forth is really good because it makes you a great racer and it can also build your confidence and build your team. Uh, because you need to go win races, you know, guys don't move up without winning in some way, shape or form. So um, as you run for a really long time with the series like the Outlaws or whatever, and you, you know, you get beat, and you get beat, and you get beat. That's good. That makes you learn a lot, makes you tough and makes you strong. But it's good for you to bounce back, then go win and kind of show what you've learned, and then come back and it makes you coming back, you know, even stronger, I would say. Um, let's see. Race and brace instead, are you going to come back to run uh, Oklahoma to run carts? You know, I'm not sure. I've had a lot of fun doing that, though. So I, I would say there's definitely a, a good chance. Um, someone said, how do you mentally prepare to come back after a crash? You know, man, I, I don't really know if there's a certain way. I think in general, like I said, racing, you just got to be really tough. I try to watch um, film. And even if it's not filmed from the incident, like I'm not saying film to learn from why you crashed or what happened or what you did wrong. I'm saying try to go watch good film of something you did right because it's kind of a reminder of, you know, bringing some of that confidence back and remembering that you can do it and stuff like that. So I think that's really important. I think drivers should do that more. I probably should do that more often. You know, I think it's easy when you're in slumps or when you're doing really good to kind of forget how things used to be at some point, which whether it was good or bad. Uh, so you got to just, I think it's good to just kind of stay in that, you know, it's, it's all about attitude and, and being positive and, and coming back. And you just got to have short-term memory in this sport, man. This sport's very, very tough. It's, I always tell people it's the toughest thing I've ever done in my life and probably will be. Um, it's just such a race, man. I mean, obviously, obviously it's such a race, but it, it really is. It's really, really crazy. Um, the ins and outs of it and, and racing is literally 75% mental too. Don't get me wrong. There's the 25% of equipment and funding and uh, combination and this and that, but at the end of the day, that big mental part, if you know, you can't overcome that, that's, um, it's really, really big. So I tell people that's, that's, you gotta work on that side of it more than anything and whatever that takes for you. I think that's different for everyone, but you got to tick in that area. Um, let's see, Jeff, just keep digging. You're doing great, Jeff. Thank you so much. And thank you for stopping by today. It was great chatting with you. Um, b -Lock said, how has the fan interaction been at the Woo and High Limit shows? Man, I feel like it's been great. I, I really think so. I think both do a great job. Um, 
you know, I think it's important to run a good, fast, efficient show, but we've had great fan interaction our whole entire trip. Granted, we've only raced four times, but I mean, shoot, it's been, uh, it's been great. I think so. No, no, no real complaints on that side of things. David said, are you full-time with the outlaws or on your own? No, I'm not full-time with anyone right now. I guess you could say we're full-time racing, but, um, you know, man, we're just bouncing around whatever makes the most sense. Uh, we can change our schedule in a heartbeat. We have a couple places that we for sure kind of have to be, um, that we're committed in some areas, but for the most part, man, we're just happy out here racing. So. Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. Um, appreciate seeing you all here. We have a lot of people joined in, um, Love getting the chance to talk with you guys and, and uh, just talk racing, man. It's so cool. You know, what we get to do is is um, we're very fortunate, or I'm I'm super fortunate, uh, but to get to do what we do and, and I get to share it with all of you guys and, and make some fun content and and bring you along for for my journey and my story. Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's always it's always a lot of fun. And to have great people behind you, especially through the highs and the lows. You know, like I said, it, it's crazy how when you get to certain sides of the sport, you know, racing at the outlaw level, racing at the high limit level, you know, like I said, how difficult it really is. And, and having good people behind you is very, very important. You know, that's why they always talk about team and combination and why you see the guys that make it look so easy. Don't get me wrong. That is the driver and that's them doing an incredible job, but that's, uh, you know, them having a really strong backbone and people around them that, that are helping make that happen. If you guys definitely have more questions, drop them in the chat right now. We've been going for a good little bit. Jackson said you killed it at Chili Bowl. I've had, I have a lot of people always talk about Chili Bowl. I forget how big of a race that is and how cool it is that we get to compete inside that building. And I definitely would like to get some more midget experience before I do it again. It's really hard to go there and not have driven a midget much. Um, it makes it a little frustrating, right? Because you're like, man, I know I can beat some of these guys. I know I could be better than I am. And and it's also one of those situations that's so circumstantial. You could go and I could go be a full-time midget racer and go to Chili Bowl and have just as bad of a prelim night as I did this last year, right? Things just happen. So, um, you know, and I could run no midget races and end up looking like a hero somehow just because. That's just kind of kind of how it goes. Uh, David said, what are the chances of you racing a non-wing sprint? Do you, do you see yourself going over to Australia to run a few races? So the chance of me running a non-wing sprint probably – you know, probably a little bit slimmer. Here's my thought on the whole thing. And I, I say it the same way every time. Non-wing racing is incredible. It's really cool. It's awesome. It's fun to watch. Probably more exciting than wing racing. But the butt part, um, where I come from, non-wing racing is not big. So for me, it's a little bit, I don't want to use the word waste of time. That's not what I mean. But it definitely would be more of a waste just because, you know, the chance of getting an opportunity, man, if you want a non-wing race, you got to be in Indiana. I don't live in Indiana. Um, on top of that, man, non-wing racers, unfortunately, they kind of get cheated in the system, right? You know, they, they don't get paid what they're worth. There's no reason a, a 410 non-wing show shouldn't pay. I'm not saying it should pay exactly what a World of Outlaw show pays, but man, they should be a little bit closer than they are. It's just, I think it's really hard to make money doing that. And um, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I do think that there are some real sides to it where obviously it doesn't cost as much to run a non-wing car in some ways because guys don't have as, as expensive engines and the horsepower is a little less um, just because you don't have to get as much out of a motor. And if anything, I'm sure you're detuning non-wing motor even quicker, just such a lack of grip. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. Like I said, I think, and oh, the other side of it is just so much so much more dangerous. So so you're, you, you know, more exciting show, arguably, you know, more of your life on the line and you get paid less. So, you know, on, on that side of things, it just doesn't make as much sense to own an on-wing sprint car team, I feel like. Um, right now, more than ever, it makes more sense to own a 410 wing team and to be chasing all these shows. You know, like we talked about earlier, it's very expensive to do this and you have to have a good team, good partners, all that. But man, more than ever, you know, um, there is a lot of money in the ecosystem. Um, and now, don't get me wrong, a lot of it is at the top, you know. I do wish it was spread out a little more throughout the field. And I don't mean like everyone should be paid the same, but I'd like to see maybe those hundred thousand to win races. That's great. But it'd be cooler to see, I think 50,000 to win. And that other 50 goes through the rest of the field. I've heard more guys talk about that. So I, I would like to see a little bit more of, of that happen as they pump more, more into it. I think at some point the top keeps going up and it, and 
not saying it ever needs to be capped, but, and it's great. Guys should win a lot of money. You win races. These are hard to win. You should be paid well, but it'd be cool to see, you know, maybe not 1200 to start, maybe 2000 to start or 3000 to start or whatever that looks like, um, you know, as they kind of keep going. Uh, someone asked how many times do I plan on being at Skagit this season? Well, I would say at least six or seven because three nights of dirt cup, three nights of high limit, and then I'm sure a weekly show or two. So you're looking at seven or eight times. Um, Benjamin Rizzo said, now, how do you maintain your inventory? Will you salvage new parts from crash car, then buy the rest you're missing or yeah. So kind of how we deal with, with inventory here at Tanner homes racing, it's pretty simple. We stock up the entire trailer before we leave. We basically bring as much as we can situation like Saturday happens. We throw away everything that cannot be salvaged one bit. Like if it's like some teams, maybe they would throw away, you know, if it's, if something's too much of a pain or this or that, they'll throw it away they'll, They won't put much effort in. For us, we'll take stuff apart. Um, for example, radius rods collapsed. We're going to take both rod ends out, save the rod ends, save the, the rod end nuts, and and call it a day where some teams might just throw the whole radius rod out. So we're going to put in the effort to save as much as we possibly can from a crash car. We're going to note that that stuff's crashed and then move on from there, and it kind of just is what it is. Uh, with that, we also, like I said, we have as many spares as we can carry in the trailer. So if something happens, if you know, our car was more salvageable, we could use those spares to build that car again, to make it a backup car or to make it race ready. Uh, and then we also try to have enough spares to replace those spares. So, you, you know what I mean? You're trying to have three to four sets of everything, if that makes sense. And that's including the car upstairs. So if you have a set on your race car, a set on there, and then hopefully two sets in the trailer, that's in a perfect world. We don't have that on everything, but you kind of attempt on the bigger stuff. That would be like, you know, um, you know, that would be like our rear ends, front axles, um, you know, torque tubes, torque ball, um, drive lines, uh, you know, a couple spare U-joints, um, of course, spare shocks, radius rod sets, you know, any of this, especially the simple stuff that, you know, you would say not as cost, not as costly, you know, you have as much of that because that stuff breaks super easily. Like I said, radius rods and front axles, you just, you got to. So, um, yeah, so our main thing is to have as much as we possibly can in the trailer, for as long as we're going to be gone. And then when we get home, like try to restock back up or figure out what we need to do and um, kind of where we're at with our season. Right. You know, like I, I think if you're having a really bad year, you know, maybe you have to take a couple weeks off and, and just, you know, you're not just necessarily building to keep going again. Um, but if you're having a great season, like try to keep racing, keep the momentum going, or, or maybe you're having a great season. You still want to take a week off. You know, that stuff happens too. Ooh, this is a good question. Alex said, hey, Tanner, I enjoyed watching you mature over the years. Um, would you join SRX race if given the opportunity? Absolutely. XR, I don't actually haven't followed it crazy, but it does look pretty cool. And um, it'd be something different, you know, definitely would not turn down something like that to race with a lot of cool guys. Oh, Tyler had asked, which we had talked about a little bit, but how bad was the car last weekend? It was pretty good. It was substantial. Um you know, the frame needs some work, so I'm going to have to take that home and, and we'll put a new clip on the front and uh, needs a little work in the back. The rear end got pretty good amount of damage. Um, front axle was smoked. All of our radius rods were smoked. Um, let's see. Uh, I think the steering gearbox is OK. Torque tube, I think, was bent. So, I mean, some of it, you know, blew out a couple shocks. All, all four shocks needed work. So, I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty good one. I hate to say it, you know, definitely, definitely a sad deal. Right. Um, it was, it was a pretty good crash, unfortunately, but, um, you know, you have those Some, sometimes, they, sometimes it just wipes out the wing and you, you know, you kind of touch everything back up and go. And sometimes you wipe out, you know, almost everything. So it was, I mean, it was a pretty good crash. So it wasn't like it wiped out, wiped out everything. And I just tipped on my side. It was, uh, you know, I, I rode the wall pretty good and, and, um, you know, I just made a mistake. So, you know, that happens. Ooh, this is a good one. Someone said, did you see the NARC race at the new Stockton um, with the new configuration? What are your thoughts? Man, in a situation like this, you know, I know that everyone kind of jumps up and down concerned. Uh, my main thing is, you know, give those guys a chance. I want to see more races happen there. And before I kind of give my opinion, I do think, and I think they said they were going to, but I think they need to add some banking. I think they could still make it a little bit bigger. I haven't seen it in person, but it did look pretty small. My main thing is if they could make it a little bit wider, a little bit more banked, um, I think it'd be great. I just think it needs more banking. You know, I think it's too flat. Uh, and I know that there was a situation in, uh, entering turn three with there's a pump house sitting there. I think they need to fix that wall so it's a little bit safer. Other than that, you know what? Progress is progress. And hopefully they keep getting things going in the right direction. So I'm not going to fault them for that. 
Um, but I do want to see it in person and, you know, before I just make a, make a judgment, I know obviously that what happened Saturday was not good, but, um, I mean, it, it just, it's just how it goes sometimes. So, Oh, uh, mad cow Mark, would you ever race in Australia? Yes. And I've actually talked to a lot of people about racing over there. Just never had the right thing come up, but hopefully this year, you know, I kind of already been speaking with some people, so hopefully I can make it happen. I would love to, I would absolutely love to come to Australia. Um, be nice to just go over there for a couple weeks, spend the new year over there. Maybe, um, obviously if you go do that, you would probably wouldn't do chili bowl, but you know, kind of be like a semi racing vacation, right? Like go see Australia. Australia looks amazing. So one of these days I'm definitely before I, before I'm done racing, I don't know, you know, whenever, whenever, wherever my road takes me, I don't care. Even if I got to make it happen myself, I'm going to get go to Australia. So I could promise that I'm going to be down under and, and get a chance to see that at some point. Ooh, uh, someone said, how long do these engines last before they need a rebuild? So the four tens, I would say most guys nowadays are getting, you know, roughly 18 to 18 ish nights out of them, 18 to 20 nights, 20 is kind of probably the, on the higher end. I know some of the guys out on the road are maybe even going a little bit less, uh, you know, 12 to 15, maybe, maybe guys are even doing less than that. I'm not, you know, hundred percent sure on every single person's operation. I know for us, we're anywhere from, you know, 17 to 20 nights, probably closer to 20. If you can get every night out of it, you're doing, you're doing your oil changes, you're checking, you know, you're doing all your maintenance, you're, you're running the valves. Everything looks good. Um, you know, we'll probably run it right up to 19 or 20 and and then send it back uh, to Ryder because Ryder does all of our 410 engines. And, you know, sometimes they'll sometimes they'll say like, oh, man, you you, you got this one in just in time or um, or, you know, a lot of times it's like, hey, everything looks great. Not saying you should have ran it more, but like, yeah, you followed the cycle and everything's good to go and put this thing back in, fire it back up, go, go run back, go, you know, go run again. So that's kind of. Um, it's kind of how that goes. So, and then of course, sometimes things happen before, before they're, you know, the cycle of things. And that's, that's part of it. Let's see. Oh, uh, Riker said, so any way you would ever hop in a micro? Absolutely. I've actually talked to some people about hopping in a micro. I think it's likely that 2024 could be the year where that happens. So I would definitely, definitely would like to do it with a wing and without a wing. I would like to run both. If you guys have some more questions, drop them in the chat. Um, if you just joined in, currently in the Texas area, um, we just had some fun today doing a couple appearances, and now we're getting ready to head over to the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedways. They're getting ready to start the uh, the truck race, so that's going to be really fun. Going to be a big weekend with High Limit. Um, I think they're expecting anywhere from thirty to thirty five cars, maybe even more than that. It's kind of hard, you know. The Texas area, they actually got some local guys down here, which is very awesome. It's great to see a local 410 scene. We need more local 410 scenes across the country, which as this whole thing has kind of happened and there's more money in 410 racing, I think we're kind of starting to see more of it, which makes me really happy. We need we need more of that even out west. So hopefully it kind of continues to come back. Robert said, how much would a crash like that set you back financially? Man, I mean, just in general, crashing is not good, right? You know, we're, we're a family operation. Um, and so, you know, anything like that, that does definitely hurts us. Definitely. Um, but you know, you just got to keep your head down and, and keep working hard and try to rebuild. That's all, that's all you really can do. Luckily, you know, I've talked, we have a lot of really great partners on our car and without them, I wouldn't be out here racing. So, um, you know, you just do all you can to take care of your equipment. And, and like I said, figure out what's salvageable and what's not. Um, but at the end of the day too, you're already out here. So you're going to keep going no matter what, but a situation like that's definitely not ideal, especially in a day and age where sometimes parts are a little harder to get or a little harder to get snap of your fingers. Um, but you try to prepare for that stuff too in the off season. And unfortunately in all your racing, you kind of have to, you know, stuff like that's going to happen. So you can't, you know, you, you can't just expect it's never, you know what I mean? Like it's unfortunate, but it's just, you know, right. That's part of kind of your overall I don't I mean, you shouldn't use the word budget, but like, you know, you're just gonna, you're just gonna have that. Oh, Tony said, do you get any feedback from other teams at new tracks? You know, some of the people that, you know, a little bit here and there, if you just happen to be talking to a guy, I wouldn't say I necessarily go out and seek it. Um, I feel like in, in Wingsport car racing, everyone's pretty to themselves. Um, you know, like I guess I think you can naturally get talking to people and some of that kind of gets gets uh, brought up, but it's not necessarily like, hey, I'm going to go to the track and try to ask five different people what they think of this track and what their advice would be, what to do. 
and maybe, maybe, maybe I should do more of that. I don't know. But, um, you know, I feel like everyone's more kind of does their thing and kind of just, you know, it is what it is kind of what I think if it's a place that's more well-known, I just try to watch as much video as I can from it. And I think that that kind of tells some of the tale, um, at least of where you should be, how the track's going to change, where the lines are at, like all that stuff's very, very important. So I think, um, you know, more than anything, that's probably the best thing you can do. Ooh, someone said if uh, if you race one of a kind, sprint car, cart, midget, or micro for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'm boring. I would probably just say a wing sprint car. But um, as far as cars I've never got to try that I want to run one day is I want to run a silver crown car. I've never been in a silver crown car. But, man, it looks gnarly. Run the mile tracks or even um, some of the pavement stuff, like the little 500. I believe that's silver crown cars, whatever, or racing an IRP or some of the other places like it just looks insane um, or they run the silver crown cars. Like they used to run them at Phoenix international raceway and you're doing like 160 or 70 miles an hour or something like that. Like stuff like that is really impressive to me. So I, uh, I definitely would like to give them, give them a try one day. And I feel like I've never really talked to someone that's ran one and didn't have a smile on their face. You know, sometimes you talk to people like, man, that, that kind of car is boring or this or that never talked to anyone that said a silver crown car was not fun. Someone said, uh, someone said, you ever going to come race with IRA? We have talked about it before. We, we definitely keep that in mind. And um, they have a great series up there and a lot of great local cars. It seems like in the mid would be Michigan, Wisconsin area. Um, so definitely don't count us out for maybe getting to an IRA show. You guys have some more questions, definitely drop them in. I appreciate you guys, you know, hanging out with me here on this Friday afternoon. Um, we have a lot of fun doing what we do. And like I said, our car's all already, we fired it. It's actually, I don't think I mentioned this. So this week, cause we have two different, we have two different 410 engines that we were, you know, going back and forth between one's more of a big track motor. One's a small track motor. So since we were going to go to West Memphis and the small track on Friday, we had our little track motor in well, Tuesday canceled. We're like, well, shoot, I guess we're gonna have to run Friday and then switch. Um, which we could run the motor we're running Friday on Saturday, but we just were like, well, we're going to try to get all the power. You know, you never want to go somewhere and not have as much horsepower as the guy next to you because a big racetrack like Texas motor speedway dirt track, you're going to want the power. I promise you that. So we, uh, my poor, my poor guys, Carly and Blake who are helping me, they changed mo or they, you know, put the little track motor in the backup car, both nights rained out. So they had to pull back out, put our big track, mo our bigger track engine, you would say in for Saturday. And technically maybe after Saturday, we'll pull that motor back out and have to put the little one back in because we're going to RPM Crandall. Um, you can run a big track engine, obviously at a little track, it just might feel a little different how the throttle response is and stuff like that. But just those poor guys having to pull engines back and forth is, is not, um, I mean, it's easy, but it's still, you know. Uh, Mason said, what race are you most excited for? Man, hard to not be excited for Knoxville. Like I said, uh, that's a big one. If I had to look at the whole entire season, though, I love some of our races we have at home because I just get really excited at, at to race at home. Um, you know, there's just something about it. We don't get to do it often. So I would say if I could run, uh, you know, there's the Southern Oregon Speedway 410 KWS Sprint Car Show on June 12th. That's big. I got that circled on the calendar. And then Dirt Cup, which is like a week later. Uh, $62,000 to win. We ran fifth at it last year. We ran second and fourth on the prelim nights. So I feel like this year could be our year to, to really compete for dirt cup and, and, or, you know, win a prelim night too. I mean, obviously you want to win the final thing, but I'm just saying, I think that, you know, we definitely could win, would, could win a night of dirt cup. So that's kind of our goal. Someone said, I really like what you said last night, winners or losers that never gave up. It's very true. <laughs> Very, very true. Let's see. Uh, someone said, Ted asked if I'm racing tonight. We are not racing tonight. We were supposed to, but unfortunately we rained out. Charles asked, are you planning on racing in Canada slash Quebec one day? Would like to get up there. Um, I don't really know what the racing scene looks like besides at Osh Weekend and some of the other tracks, but definitely would like to get up there um, one day. So John said, I looked at your schedule. Don't see you're going to Jackson. I know I don't have Jackson on there this year with the high limit deal kind of core or the high limit and outlaw deal. They kind of schedule on top of each other when we're supposed to be racing out at home. So 
I don't really know what that's all going to look like. Doesn't mean we might not get to Jackson, but it does suck not going there after, you know, that was arguably the best track I ran last year after, you know, starting with the shark racing deal and all of a sudden racing. And, you know, we were really fast, uh, ran third, 10th and seventh with those guys. So three top tens in our first weekend in the shark racing car. So it does suck. I don't have them on my schedule. That was a pretty fun racetrack. Um, someone asked if I'm going to be at Houston's right now. I have Houston's on the schedule at the end of July, but I'm not going to be there for their big race because that's on top of dirt cup. So you can either go to dirt cup for like 62 to 82,000, depending on how many laps you lead, or you can go to Skagit or sorry, or you can go to Houston's for 250. Don't get me wrong. That's a lot more money, but I mean, I think we have a better shot at winning the, the 82 or 62 or whatever. So I feel like it's in our best interest to go there probably going to be wrapping this up here in just a little bit guys so drop your uh drop your last minute questions um anything you have definitely look forward to answering them i appreciate you guys all hanging out with me it's a quick little live stream i figure we end today off with a bang um you know like i said we have been having a having a lot of fun out here just haven't got to do as much racing as we want we've been sitting in the pouring rain so i'm like well i guess i better talk to you guys like i said i'm supposed to be racing today and i'm not so that's that's kind of how that goes Uh, someone said, what race do you want to win most this year? Man, uh, I just kind of talked about it, Dirt Cup. When I think of anything, Dirt Cup. Dirt Cup's kind of it for me. Uh, if I could, you know, if we could do well at that, I feel like that's one we've really talked about a lot and focused on. Um, there's a lot of other shows, though. I mean, Gold Cup at Chico. There's the Skagit Nationals back at Skagit. Uh, Roseburg High Limit Show. You know, anything that's kind of at home is a little more priority just because I feel like you have obviously a better shot at places that you run with regularly. But, you know, there's also races out here, like I said, I would tell you Knoxville Nationals, you know, that's, but that's when everyone has circled on their calendar, right? But 360 Nationals for sure, too, because we were running well at that last year before we broke, you know, top five cars. So we definitely have the speed to, to make it happen. Let's see. Uh, Lou said, do you still feel a little tentative? I, I think he meant timid, maybe, about challenging the other big name drivers on the track. Here's kind of what, how my opinion on all that. So if someone's car is really good, if your car is really good, if you're on it, everything's going your night, I feel like no one's really intimidating. I've had moments like when I first got in the shark car and things were clicking well and I just felt good and our car was dialed in and, and I was I was also doing my best and, um, you know, like I, or I was, you know, every, everything was coming together, right? You look at the lineup and no one's, no one's scary. It's like, whatever, I got this, right? Uh, now, when you feel not as confident in your race car and you're struggling with some stuff and, you know, everything's not clicking because, like I said, it's all combination, then everything feels difficult. Then you're like, then everyone feels like it's a huge challenge. You're like, shoot, I got to line up with these guys. You know what I mean? So that's 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 just how racing is. I think uh, a lot of times, when, you know, when guys aren't running good, it's just simply a, a, a confidence thing or, or you know, like I said, everything's just not clicking, right? You Because the second that, you know, you're, you're not as 100% sure with your car, you then you're less sure with yourself and then you're questioning things. So... Like I said, it goes back to the racing as a total mental game. Um, so my, my thing is it, it kind of comes and goes in waves. I don't think you're really intimidated by anybody if you're happy with your car and you're like, man, I got this. I, I can be the best driver and, you know, I can make it happen. Let's see. Ooh, someone asked for advice. Uh, what can you give a box stock driver that, you know, racing for the first time? Man, the main thing, go out there, have fun. Make Get seat time, make laps have a good time. Don't, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just literally go out there and, and, and go race. I think that's a really big deal. Uh, you know, main thing is you just go do your thing and, and figure it out. And, and like I said, more than anything, have a fun time. When people are first starting racing, I think everyone puts so much pressure on, they want to, you know, everyone wants to be a NASCAR driver or wants to be this, wants to be that. And especially when you're just a kid, man, you need to go out there and have fun and, and, uh, you know, just, just go, just go do it. Just step on the gas, get faster every lap. You know, like I said, get more seat time, try to learn how your car feels, you know, talk with the people that are watching, really listen to what people are saying and what their, you know, advice from other people. Um, you know, you just got to listen to what everyone is telling you around you and and, and correlate that with what you feel and, and then just, you know, get better every single time you're on track. 
So uh, I think that's going to probably wrap things up. I appreciate you guys all hanging out with me this afternoon. Um, it was great talking with you all. We're going to head over to Texas Motor Speedway. We'll catch you guys tomorrow with the High Limit Show. We're going to have some more content coming out, fixing everything, getting things back ready to go, more race day vlogs. And so um, thank you guys so much for your support. Thanks for, you know, a couple people donated. Um, thank you. Supports our team. Helps us get up and down the road. So we appreciate it, guys. And we'll, uh, we'll see you in just a little bit with some more content.